In this video, I'm going to show you my process and the techniques I use animating this YouTube intro in After Effects. This intro was made for the amazingly talented Sydney illustrator and pal of mine, Jeremy Lord. He's got a ton of amazing live streams with Adobe, we even did one together, definitely check out his work. He was into this LED glitch effect that I was playing around with and made a tutorial about specifically that. And we thought we could add some new elements, bring together some ideas to show off his work and an intro for his YouTube channel. We wanted to feature his work in the intro so viewers could quickly see what he was about from the start. And that was the same process behind the design of my intro, throwing a whole heap of cool looking stuff at the start to hopefully convince the viewer that we know what we're talking about, even if we don't. So here's what the base animation looks like without any effects on it. So let's break down how this all works. At the start of the animation down here, we have got a bunch of triangles. Jeremy's logo features a triangle, so I wanted to lean on that as a design element for this intro. The first one is a pink triangle flashing on and off. That's it. That's all done with hold keyframes on its opacity, going from 100 to zero. Now you can change your regular out of the bag linear keyframes to hold keyframes by right clicking and selecting toggle hold keyframes. With linear keyframes, it fades on and off, but with hold keyframes, it flicks from zero to 100 with no animation in between. And this was to mimic a flashing cursor that you might have when something loads. And then we get this montage of Jeremy's work inside these triangles. Let's just solo all of these triangles and see what's going on. This next triangle here is doing something very similar, just flashing on much, much faster and also scaling up as well. And then at two and a half seconds in, we get this really large triangle scaling down that ends up meeting our triangle in the middle. And then just about three seconds in, we cut to a triangle that is completely filled in. And that's so we have a bigger canvas to show off Jeremy's artwork. And these all have their scale animated, so they come to this final resting size around here. And that's before we cut to the logo at the end. So how do we get all these images of the artwork inside the triangles without using a lot of mats and masks? That's actually really easy. The first thing we need to do is make a comp of all the images flickering. Here I have a comp with a bunch of Jeremy's artworks, all in a sequence, so they're on screen for four frames each. Then I parented them all to this null object in the middle of the screen, and that scales down from 110% to 100%. So there's just a tiny bit of zooming out on each of the images, and that just adds the subtlest motion to the whole thing. I place that comp inside another comp where I've looped it six times just by duplicating it, so it lasts for the whole animation. And then I place that comp, our art flip loop, over the top of those triangles in this comp position. And from here, all we need to do is click this box in this column here, and that is preserve underlying transparency. And when we do that, we can see that this comp is now only visible on the already visible areas of this comp. Anything that was transparent stays that way. This is a really useful feature. I went years before I knew After Effects could do this. And we've also got a couple of effects that are on top of everything here. At the top, we've got an adjustment layer with posterized time set to 12 frames per second, because I love a lower frame rate look. Uh, ignore that if you want your intro at 24, 30 frames, or even 48 frames per second to get that Hobbit trilogy look. This is just my preference. There's no right or wrong frame rate. They all have a purpose. And then we've got here a fractal noise comp with a blending mode set to overlay and its opacity is set pretty low down to 30%. And if we toggle that on and off, you can see this is giving a texture of these sort of glitchy strips throughout the animation. Let's go into that comp and see what's in there. Here we have a single black solid with the fractal noise effect applied to it. We've changed the noise type to block, so we get these squares of noise. And we've also increased the scale width, so we get these strips of glitches rather than some squares. And then I've also animated its evolution property by using the simple expression time times 500, which just gives an increasing number, so this will animate and change over time. Now, I walk through every step of how to create this in my glitch effect tutorial, if I've glossed over this too much in this breakdown. And then before we get to Jeremy's main logo, we have this Katakana version of his logo here. And this has an effect where it glitches in as well. Now, that glitch effect is done by animating a displacement map. So we add the displacement map effect to this layer and then we take the map layer from this fractal noise comp that I just showed you with all our black and white glitches and what this effect does is displace and distort our layer our katakana logo layer here based on how bright our displacement map layer is our glitchy black and white comp let's turn transparency off for a second so we can see this a little bit clearer so when we increase the maximum horizontal displacement because our map is made of these long glitchy strips the more we increase this the more it pulls apart this layer in a sort of glitchy way at the start, we've keyframed this at 100% maximum horizontal displacement. So it's pretty glitched out at the start. And then we keyframe it down to zero just a few frames later. So that just looks like it's glitching in from nowhere. And then we've got Jeremy's logo, finally. Now we've got three layers of logo down here. 
The bottom two are duplicates of a comp that has his logo in it. The comp just has his logo in it. There's no animation in there, nothing special. But the bottom of these two comps has some effects applied to it. Let's solo that layer and take a look. First, we have a fill effect set to white, which just makes that whole comp white. Then we have the effect Colorama, which then changes it to this crazy hyper-colored effect. And this is looking really glitchy because if we go into our effect here, we've selected add phrase from that fractal noise comp again, the black and white glitchy one. So what this is doing is taking the black and white values of that glitchy comp and then outputting that as these hyper-colored, super-saturated colors here. And then we get this look that kind of looks like Predator's thermal vision. And then one last effect on top of that is posterized time set to six frames per second. So that this animates slower and isn't too overwhelming for the audience. Now this still looks a bit too crazy. I wanted to keep some of the pink and cyan colors from Jeremy's original logo. So that's what the next two layers are doing. If we solo just this top version of our logo, we can see it's Jeremy's flat colored logo, but let's turn our transparency on. And now we can see it's transparent in our glitch pattern. So this was done by placing a copy of our glitchy fractal noise comp on top of that logo layer and then selecting on our logo's trap mat and selecting luma mat. And what that does is take the black values from our glitchy fractal noise comp and make those areas transparent in our logo. And then we place that over the top of our crazy looking colors. We still get enough of the colors we want as well. And for this all to animate out, we've got a fractal noise transition. So this last layer is a solid with the fractal noise effect applied to it. This time the noise type layer is soft linear, not blocky. And we've cranked the contrast way up to almost 500. And we're only keyframing the brightness. So at the start it's really bright Right, almost white and then goes to almost black and then we set the blending mode to stencil luma which makes the black areas transparent cutting through every layer underneath it so it kind of dissolves away and that's everything in our main comp let's go into the final effects comp where we really add a lot of the cool effects so in our top effects comp we've got three layers at the top we've got an adjustment layer with posterized time set to 12 frames per second to keep things at that lower frame rate because there's a few animated elements happening in this comp and then we have again our fractal noise comp with our black and white glitches, just so we can refer to that later, that is hidden, so we won't see that. And then we've got our intro main comp, which has these LED glitch effects applied to it. So there's three effects on this comp. Let's go through them one by one. The first effect is a displacement map. This works exactly how we did the Katakana logo. I'm using our fractal noise as the displacement map layer. And at the very start, we can see we've got our max displacement up pretty high at 160. And then that goes down to zero at the start. So we get our triangle glitching in. And then where we've got a cluster of keyframes is where we've got our displacement going from zero up to something higher, like 200, and then back down to zero. And I'm doing a little bit on our vertical displacement as well. But really most of the glitch is happening horizontally. We have a small one here, and then we have a big one when we transition into our logo. And because we're essentially cutting from these triangles with the artwork in them to the logo, this glitch really helps mask that transition. And then at the end, we have it finally glitching out as wide as we possibly can. And then we've got the effect CC ball action. And this is normally used for turning your animation into balls where you can scatter them and have some cool effect there. But we're gonna use it with no scatter and set the grid spacing really low to two and the ball size low to 55. So when we do that, we essentially get a square pixel grid with a gap between each pixel. And I really like that because it turns this sort of weird, a bit gross looking distortion into what I think is a kind of really beautiful pixelated mix of colors and just makes everything look like an LED screen. And then at the end, I've applied the effect Deep Glow. Deep Glow is a really useful plugin for getting great natural looking glows with just a few clicks. And what I really need it here for is to get a transparent background. So if we turn our transparency on, we can see that we can now export this with an alpha channel. And this is so Jeremy can use that on different pieces of footage at the start of each of his videos. And then we're done. If you want a more step-by-step -step walkthrough of me creating that glitch effect from scratch, check out the tutorial on my channel. To discover the best ways to learn motion design, I've created a short playlist of videos that I think you'll enjoy if you've made it this far. Please like the video and consider subscribing if you'd like more of these videos every week. I'll see you in the next video.